I'm feeling rather caged up these days. Let's jump into it and I'll explain. Welcome to this episode of Design Talk by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode of Design Talk, I want to share this camera cage that I whipped up. Now, I've got this older Kodak video or vlogging camera I've had for quite a while. Longtime viewer Norman talked me into buying this, oh, back when I started this channel umpteen moons ago. It's still a great camera, though. It does 1080p. It has an external mic input on the side. However, the issue with it is, is the cinch or the tripod or quarter 20 connection is here at the bottom. Many times when I'm doing overhead like I'm doing here or recording a 3D printer, etc., I need to come in from the top. And that's where those uh, uh, GoPro type knockoff cases with quarter 20 at each end for those cheap Chinese cameras works out great. But here I didn't have that. So what I did is I turned to Fusion 360 based upon the inspiration I used to create this case, if you remember, for the cheap and cheerful Chinese action camera, I decided to do one for this. And it actually came out pretty good. The basic design concept is much the same. I left openings for the different connectors so I could still access them. The mic, the uh, mini uh, uh, HDMI, etc. And I also put a bunch of quarter 20 holes, 9 millimeters on center throughout the uh, case so I could attach it to various different cinching mechanisms, tripods, you know, rigs, etc., and, and use it. So all in all, it came out pretty good. The other piece I want to share is I did print this out of PETG. I like to use PETG for these type of applications. However, with this one, I had some issues, and I wanted to share that aspect too, because one of the pieces uh, is, is the... Uh, the sections here are very thin, as you can see over here, and this still has quite a bit of uh, support material because I didn't want to make it much wider than the actual camera itself. However, with that, getting it up off the bed, as you can see, I damaged it. It was it adhered rather well to the bed, and there wasn't a lot of meat here to hold things. So one of the things I used is some uh, stick glue on the bed surface I'm using, as I mentioned in a previous video, a uh, Biltac knockoff, and I get really good adhesion. And if the part is rather sturdy, again, like this case is, as you can see how thick it is and everything. And I also printed this side down. And matter of fact, it kind of well, they're both about the same. So you know, I can't get away with that trick uh, because you notice both are pretty thick on this side. So I printed it this side down, and it came off, uh, you know, without a problem. This one, not so good. However, I did experience a little bit of lifting here. And part of the problem with this is the amount of time that this takes to print. Because this is the other aspect I wanted to share. Uh, because I prefer using the KISS slicer for PETG. I get better uh, output product from the KISS slicer on PETG than I do Cura, hands down. Don't ask me why, I really don't understand it. Um, but it, that's what I get. However, the problem with the KISS slicer is I can't tell it how not to put uh, support somewhere, uh, but yet still have supports in other areas. And this is the case with these openings. I still needed support, but I wanted to stop the support on the quarter 20s. Now these quarter 20s are fully modeled quarter, quarter 20s. Um, so there's threads in there. So if I take a bolt and run them in here, there are threads inside there. Now I printed this at a 0.2 millimeter height. So I get relatively good threads, enough for a quarter 20 bolt to uh, thread to. And one of the things that you can see here is this was printed with no supports. And these are pretty concentric circles, if you will. Uh, so no need for supports here, and that saves a lot of time and a lot of aggravation. But the thing is, it still provides a lot of on-bed time. And, you know, this is where your warping occurs, is the more time you spend on the bed, obviously, the more... Uh, you know, chances you'll have some warping. So I still have to work on that a little bit, but you know, other than that, I'm real happy with the way that this uh, whole project turned out. I'll have this out on Thingiverse now. I know there's, you know, probably not a lot of these hanging around. If you have one, maybe get it out of the closet, go print it out, you know, print this cage out, put it to good use. Um, however, what I also want to inspire you to do is just as in this case, here it is, I had an older camera, I wanted to repurpose it, and I used 3D printing to do that repurposing by designing this cage and the structure around it to make it more effective in you know, a different application. I hope you also found it a little inspiring too because that's the purpose of the Design Talk series. With that, if you did, hey, please give it a big thumbs up. Follow us on Thingiverse. 
Swag Shop will be up there. Subscribe over there. And we'll catch you guys in the next video where we do something else cool. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.